Last night was amazing, amen? amen? I want to tell you a story about this little kid. Um, but first, in order for me to tell you the story, I have to kind of like see if this is going to work in this area. Um, kind of builds up the excitement of it a little bit. I'm not sure if it's going to work. I always feel stupid every time I'm going to do it because it reveals my nerd. <laughs> okay, let me see if it works. If you know what I'm doing, help me out. All right. Okay, get up. Get up with me. Come on. Get louder. Yes. Yes. Louder. Yes. 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 Oh, you made me feel so nerdy and happy inside. Thank you. Good job. Some of you are like, what am I yesing about? What are they doing? I'm a huge fan of wrestling. I've always been a huge fan of wrestling. You can't see me. Um, there's a story about this little kid. His name's Connor the Crusher. Connor, Connor's this kid who's he's a huge, huge fan of wrestling. And um, Connor, Connor had uh, brain cancer. And one of his last wishes was to meet his favorite wrestler. And he had an opportunity to meet his favorite wrestler, and he came in and and he just won over the whole locker room, the whole industry, fell in love with this kid. His life was just that amazing. His personality, his charisma, everything about him was just so amazing that these superstars were just falling in love with him. They invited him to go to the, the Super Bowl of wrestling events, WrestleMania, and he got super excited. He got to sit ringside and watch everything happen. Well, his favorite wrestler is wrestling and ends up winning the championship. This guy is, you know, a shorter wrestler, not exactly your traditional, you know, bulked up wrestler. He's just a shorter guy just doing his thing. And he won the championship. And you would think that in the glory, in his glory, in his moment to shine, that he would be all about himself holding up that championship belt. But we see when he wins that he's running around the ring frantically looking for someone. And he finally makes eye contact with Connor the Crusher. And Connor's over there, and Connor's real sick, real pale at this point in time. Like he's trying to hold on for the match, but he's just whatever. And the wrestler comes down and he goes to Connor and he goes, We did it. And they hold up the championship belt together. Connor, a week later, ends up passing away. The last, <laughs> the last moments of his life, Connor felt like a champion. But he left such an impact on all those superstars that they could not stop talking about him. So much so that this year they inducted him into the WWE Hall of Fame and awarded him the Warrior Award. There wasn't a dry eye there because Connor lived a life worth talking about. In his small little lifespan, he lived a life that was worth talking about. He lived a life abundantly. It, death could not hold him down. He didn't care that he was about to die. He cared about living, and he did it. I want us to have that same exact life. This is what this weekend's all about, is living that life abundantly, no longer being enslaved to the nonsense that we bought into and all the lies, but truly being free and free in God and his limitless love. But what we need is a little bit of power in that. See, we have this encounter with God the Father, and we're like, yeah, Daddy. And then yesterday, a lot of us had this awesome encounter with Jesus, and we're like, yeah, Jesus! I love him! He made me cry. 
And then we get to the Holy Spirit and you're like, yay. Yay, Holy Spirit. You do what you do, all bird-like. <laughs> In our profession, when we, when we speak our creed, we talk about the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. But then we talk about him in our personal life. We're like, yay, you're kind of cool. I don't know who you are. We need the Holy Spirit so bad. They say Fulton Sheen. Fulton Sheen was kind of like the beginnings of what Father Robert Barron is today. You know what I mean? Like, he's the one who, like, took it to the media. And he talked and he had shows and he had books and he was a man. And Fulton Sheen was talking about the relationship between God the Father and God the Son, that there became this moment where in their interaction and their gaze upon one another, that there was this speechless love, this <gasps> that moment of breath, of wow. And he said that that moment is the Holy Spirit. Yesterday when you were... Eye to eye with Jesus, I had the opportunity of seeing some of you just look face to face with Jesus. And some of you had that moment where you're just like, <sighs> and that was the Holy Spirit. You know that feeling because you can probably tap back into it yesterday. That moment that you realized that you were looking into the eyes of love, that you were looking into the eyes of your Lord. When I met my wife for the very first time, I was DJing. I used to teach Latin dancing. I was not good. <laughs> but to most of the white people that attended my class, they're like, whoa, he's spectacular. He should be on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> well, I bumped into my wife. I bumped into this beautiful Lebanese Italian woman that day. I remember I walked outside and I was just kind of like, oh, another night of teaching people how to. <gasps> My heart is, I wish you can't, you can't hear it. It's, it's racing now. <laughs> I was completely blown away by how beautiful she was, completely and utterly blown away. And I remember I tried to play it cool. Hi. Mm, I gotta go. And I went inside and I started talking about, I met the girl of my dreams, I'm gonna marry her. My friends go, you said you were gonna marry everyone. But this is different, my heart did thump thump and not just thump. When me and my wife eventually, we came up to the altar and we exchanged that gaze and we exchanged these vows that we were gonna be with us together forever. We both kind of looked at each other and went, <sighs> and out of that love and that complete surrender and that complete emptying to one another, the creation of, of uh, Cecilia, my daughter, came to be. No, babies don't come from bad breath. <laughs> but there was love that was there. I want to show you guys a picture. I don't have it on the big screen. Where, their cameraman, where's the cameraman guy? Yeah, you want to flash this in front of your camera over there? Yeah, I'm just going to. So my, can, I, can you see that? It's my mixtape cover. That's little Antonio and that's Cecilia. You see that? Yeah, no, that's my crew. And we, like my life has changed dramatically because of the love that, that me and my wife both have for one, one another, and two, how much that love just overflows into our kids, no matter how much they can possibly annoy me. <laughs> some of us don't know that encounter, and some of us don't even know what to do with that encounter, because you're still kind of caught up in the darkness, and you're still kind of caught up in the whole, I love you guys. Can I just have real talk for a second? Real talk mean I'm not going to hold anything back. Are you good with that? Some of us are still sitting there feeling sorry for ourselves, that our lives are just so horrible. When God's love is pouring 
out into us and he's saying to us, how much more do I have to do for you to finally give it all to me? The Holy Spirit wants to be a part of that movement. The Holy Spirit wants to be a part of what gives you that abundant life, that life worth living for, that life that everyone's going to talk about, that when you go home to your schools and to your neighborhoods, they're going to be like, man, that is Connor the Crusher. I'm in love with that person. What do they have that I don't have and how do I get it? In Pentecost, when they were in the room, they were in the upper room and they were scared. Disciples were scared for their own lives. But they were being told to wait by Jesus because he's sending an advocate. They waited and they waited and they waited. And when the Holy Spirit came, waiting was over. They heard, like any said, the huddle. They heard that someone's going to be running a play and you're going to be going that way and you're going to be going that way and you're going to be doing this and you're going to be doing that. But they waited and waited and waited and when the Holy Spirit came, they actually did run that play. So much so that we are here now because they ran the play. When the time of Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together and suddenly there came from the sky, a noise, like a strong driving wind. It filled the entire house in which they were. There appeared to them tongues as a fire, which parted and came to rest on them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. I want to hit off four things in that scripture. Number one, that wind. They were in the room. I don't know what that room is for you. Maybe it's this place. Maybe it's home. Maybe you're just caught up in yourself. But this wind is going to come in. And we get a glimpse of this wind in Genesis When the formless, voidless land was just nothing and this mighty wind came in and creation started. This fire. Everyone's so caught up on trying to be cool. I thought in my life that I was cool. But cool is boring. You ever look at a block of ice? It does nothing. You just stare at it and you're like, dance, ice, dance. (laughs) All it does, it melts. That's it. Then you got to clean it up. But fire, I can stare at a campfire. I don't like smelling like a campfire, but I can stare at a campfire and just be amazed by how animated fire is, how powerful, but how poetically it moves. We need to stop worrying so much about being cool and start thinking about how to be on fire. Amen? Amen. The other thing that happened is that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. God doesn't come in and just give bits and pieces of himself. He's not just going to give you a little taste of, of who he is. He wants to give you all of who he is. The Holy Spirit wants to give you all. He wants to fill you. He doesn't just want to give you little itty bitty bits and pieces like those miniature peanut butter cups that it could not stop eating. Thank you, hospitality. (laughs) Not these little itty bitty things, but he wants to give you this ginormous peanut butter cup that made me salivate. He wants to fill you guys. But most importantly, that you can't live this life that we've been trying to get you guys to understand. You can't live this life abundantly without the Holy Spirit. Because like it says in that scripture, the Holy Spirit enabled them. Enabled them. That experience that you had last night, the experience that you had this weekend, it's, it's not about us 
Though it was great for the moment that we felt it, we got it, it was this great motion that was happening in our hearts. But God doesn't just give us this motion so that we can sit down and talk about that was a great motion. And just speak to yourself about it or text your friend who was here about it. That motion was set so that you can set the rest of the world on fire. You go tell them what you experienced, who you experienced, and how you experienced it. That's living that life because it's not about us. I want to tell you guys the story of of my fear. Listen, the only thing separating me from you right now is two and a half feet of stage. Like I said from the get-go, we're, we're human. I don't, I don't float to, to the places that I walk to. I don't have a halo that I hang up at night because it's uncomfortable to sleep with. I don't have these wings that are magically tucked behind my shirt, you know? I am no different than you guys. None of us are any different than you. The only thing that separates us are these two steps. That's it. And now for some of us, we're eye to eye. When I went to Hawaii, I got woken up in the middle of the night by a bunch of big Hawaiians, probably three times my size. Imagine that. <laughs> bruh, wake up, bruh. You want to be Hawaiian, brah? No? <laughs> brah, come with me. And stupidly, I followed. I got in the back of a pickup truck. Don't do this at home. <laughs> and they drove off, and they brought me to the end of the island. I heard what I thought were trains, and I said, that doesn't make sense, we're on an island. <laughs> there was this noise that just kept rumbling, and my heart was starting to be, just kind of get scared just at the noise. They said, in order for you to be Hawaiian, brah, you're gonna have to take this fishing pole and cast out. You cast out off the cliff, you catch a fish, you Hawaiian, brah. You know catch fish? You're not Hawaiian, bro. This cliff is 40 feet off the, from the ocean. And I can see waves crashing against the rocks and slowly coming over. At the time, I had a busted up leg, nasty leg. And they go, this is where you fish, bro. And it was this like diving board sized platform. I'm afraid of water. I'm afraid of height. He goes, when you fall over, bro, don't swim towards the rocks. And I go, when? <laughs> Shouldn't that be an if? And I go out there and I'm scared. I'm going to be completely vulnerable with you guys right now. The thought of it right now is making my heart race. I was so scared. I knew God had my back, but there was something that was really keeping me back. I remember at one point in time, I'm out, and a wave actually comes and knocks me down. And I was so scared because I felt at that point in time, I'm going to fall into the ocean. And I grab onto the cliff, and I actually start crying. And I go, God, I am so terrified of you right now. I don't care about this ocean. I don't care about how high I'm off the ground. I care about how powerful you are. And at the blink of an eye, if you chose to, I wouldn't exist. You created me. Give me the strength to get up and cast out. And with that came a mighty wind. And I remember just getting up like a warrior, a valiant warrior, just standing up. And I cast it out, and I caught nothing. And I cast it out, and I caught nothing. And finally, I cast out, 
And my prayer is, Lord, if this is any indication of what my ministry is going to be like, amen. But I'm not leaving this place until I catch that fish. And finally, I get a tugging on my rod. And I'm fighting like if I'm catching a shark. Ah. And I come back and I grab this little itty bitty ahi fish. And I look at him and I say, if this is the one heart that I go through all the dirt, through all the fear, if this is the one heart that the Holy Spirit has inspired me to go out into the edge of the cliff, into the edge of darkness, into the edge of the abyss, if this is where I put my heart and my ministry so that I can grab just that one heart, then I would do it over and over and over again. You are called not to be fear, full of fear, be cowards. You're called to be greater than that. I know that trusting is not our thing. We're human, we want control, but I'm asking you to lose that control right now and let the Holy Spirit guide you so that you can cast out into the deep for that heart that has been longing to find our Lord. Let's pray. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon I want you guys to just be completely vulnerable right now. Don't let, don't let last night be last night. Don't let this be the end of your experience. You need that empowerment. You need to be enabled. So I want you guys to just open up your hands right now. This is a sign of just complete surrender. And let's invoke the Holy Spirit to come into our lives so that we can really genuinely lay down those trust issues that we have, that we can really go out into the deep. I want y'all to say this with me. Hey, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit and fill my heart. Give me the courage. Give me the strength. Give me that love to go out and reach other people, to tell them my story for your greater glory, Lord. 